This is a demonstration for dissolving, filtering and evaporating for S1 science. So first of all the equipment, got a beaker, got a filter funnel, got a conical flask, got a Bunsen burner, got a bench mat, got a circle of filter paper, got a little weigh boat here, an evaporating basin and the chemical we're going to be using today is rock salt. So I've poured our rock salt out into the little weighing boat so you can see it a bit closer. Here it is. You're probably used to salt being white crystals, but as you can see this is a bit brown and red and it looks nothing like the stuff you'd want to put on your chips. That's because it's full of impurities. It's just general sand and dirt and other things in it. Other name for this chemical is grit. You may say grit spread or spread it on the road when there's been a lot of snow or ice because it helps melt the snow. This is pretty much exactly the same stuff. It's very good for that, but you wouldn't want to eat it. So today I'm going to show you the process for taking this stuff and purifying it so it looks exactly like the normal table salt you're used to. So the first step is to take our glass beaker and put some water in it. Next step is to take our rock salt and pour it into the beaker full of water. Then we get a stirring rod and start to stir it around to help it dissolve. What will happen here is the pure salt in the rock salt will dissolve in the water, but all the grit, sand and other stuff won't manage to dissolve in the water. As you can see it's gone very brown. That's all the impurities in the rock salt. I'll continue to stir this for a while and get back to you when it's more dissolved. So I spent some time with the stirring rod dissolving all of that. And as you can see I've got a horrible muddy brown colour. The salt crystal should have all dissolved in water, but any of the impurities are currently suspended in the water. And that's why you can see it is this horrible muddy brown colour. You may think well that's great, and I've just got muddy water. What I'm going to do with that, well, our next step is going to be getting our conical flask, our funnel, and our bit of filter paper, and we're going to filter out all this rubbish and hopefully get some nice water and salt mixture. So I'll set up the funnel by putting it in the conical flask, and we're going to get my bit of filter paper and we're going to fold it halfway that way, and halfway again, so the quarter circle. And then what you do is you open it up and you find it that way. So it's got three layers on this side and one layer on that side. And then that is a nice triangle shape that will fit nicely in our funnel. So now I'm going to take our beaker here and carefully pour it through the filter paper into which is in the filter funnel. Don't want to go over there, otherwise the dirty brown water will end up in our conical flask. As you can see, we've got nice clear water coming out here. It's completely colourless. I'll get back to you when it's finished filtering. So I've allowed that to continue filtering for a while, and as you can see, we've got a nice colourless solution here. And you can see the funnel is full of brown stuff. That's all the rubbish that was in the beaker before. So here's a close-up of the filter paper. As you can see, all the brown waste is now just stuck to the filter paper. And if I remove it, we've got a nice clear liquid in here. That's currently just got our water and our salt in it, in solution. At the start you may remember I said I wanted to turn our rock salt here into stuff you could use as table salt on your food. And at the moment we just have salty water. That obviously isn't any good, so what we need to do now is get rid of the water from this. And to do that we use a process called evaporation. You've heard of evaporation before, it's what happens to a puddle when the sun comes out. The water gets evaporated up and it disappears. But there's a much faster way to do it than just waiting for the sun to do this. So this is where our Bunsen burner comes in. We're going to use the heat from this to evaporate the water much quicker than just leaving it out in the sun. So we need a couple more bits of equipment for this one. Got a tripod, put over the Bunsen burner. I've got some metal tongs just in case we need to touch this when it's hot. So what we're going to do here is take our salt water solution and pour some of it into our little evaporating basin here. Don't want to make it too full though because we're going to be heating up this water so it'll be boiling and it'll start to spurt out if we feel it too full. Then I'm going to take this, put it on top of the gauze on the tripod. We'll start it off with the air hole closed. We've got a yellow safety flame. Turn the gas on and then light it. And so we don't blacken the bottom of this, we'll switch it to a blue roaring flame. So I'll leave this to heat for a little while, and then get back to you when it starts to boil. It may be difficult to see on camera, but the liquid is starting to boil. You might be able to see the top of it looking a bit disturbed there, as the water begins to boil. We don't want to boil off all the water, so that will just cause our evaporating dish to crack. So we want to leave a little bit of water, then take it off the heat, and allow the rest to evaporate naturally. We're actually beginning to see some salt crystals at the back there. So the water level in the evaporating basin is getting rather low, so I will switch the gas off, so we don't crack our evaporating basin. The water will still retain enough heat to continue evaporating for a wee while longer after I remove the heat. So a lot of the liquid seems to have evaporated, but this evaporating basin will still be very hot, so I will use my metal tongs, grab it by the side here, to safely remove it. 
The tripod will also be quite hot, so I don't want to touch that yet, so I'll just leave it sitting there until it cools down. So I have allowed the evaporating basin to cool and dry, and what we're left with is a bunch of salt crystals. I'm not sure how well they'll show up on camera. I'll scrape them, see if you can see them a bit better. I've got this bit of black paper, and I will pour some of the salt crystals onto it, so you can see how nice and pure and white they are, compared to what we started with. So if you have a look, they look nice and pure and white, just like you would get in a table salt shaker. Compare that to the original salt we had. So what we've done through the process of dissolving, filtration and evaporation is turn this into this. This is actually a real process that is done in industry. If you want to take rock salt, which you dig out the ground, and turn it into table salt that you'd eat with your chips, this is the process you use. Use the dissolving, then the filtering, then the evaporation. Except you use slightly larger machines than what I've used here.